guys, for your vision to succeed, you need to be wise. Hi everyone, I am Kiel Clark, the owner and content creator here at Kaylee's Book Club, and I am thankful that you all are here for episode 6 of Writing Your Vision so that you can accomplish your goals. Did you know that you can delay or hinder your vision from coming to pass by what you are saying? Or even who you're sharing your goals and dreams with? Who you're sharing that vision that God gave you with? Hey, let's discover it in today's episode. Let's begin with the reading of the scripture, Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. It says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie, though it tarries. Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So, this tree lets us know that it is possible for your vision to tarry, for it to be delayed. The Amplified Version says even though it delays, Wait patiently for it, because it will certainly come. Today, I just want to share four quick biblical accounts of people in the Bible that God used as examples for us today of what they said that could have hindered the purpose of God coming about in their life, as well as who they shared it, how it could have delayed it. My first account is taken from the New Testament in Luke chapter 1 where we meet Elizabeth's husband, Zacharias, who is a priest advancing age and doing the work of the Lord. An angel would have visited him and told him that his dream, his prayer was answered, that he would may have a son and his son would be named John. His response, his initial response, was that of doubt and to question. Could this be? Me and my wife are all in age. How could this be? And he would have doubted and spoke negatively about the situation. And as a result, his mouth was zipped shut. So, his mouth was open and it was mm, zipped shut. And... It's important for us to take note of what people did and the results that happened. So in Luke 1, 18 to 20, it shared that Zacharias' mouth was zipped shut, he became mute and was not able to speak until his son was born. It was quite until verse 64, after the birth of his son and the time for his son to be named John, that his mouth was then reopened and he was now able to say that his son would be called John and then he was able to give praise and thanks to God. So, what this scripture highlighted for me personally is that I need to be careful of what I see and how I respond to the will of God for my life. So, I definitely should not be doubting, I should not be speaking negatively on a report from the Lord or a vision from God for my life. Because what I say can sabotage us. And God may need to shut me up. And it's important in this case that God shut him up so that he would not have sabotage the process. On the other hand, in this same Luke chapter 1, we would have saw the response of Mary, who became the mother of Jesus, when the angel visited her and let her know that she would bore a son, would bore the Messiah. And her response though she questioned, was that of clarity. Yes, she had concerns. She was a virgin. How could it be? And her questions was not of doubt or self-sabotage or to unbelief, but she just wanted to know how it would come about. And in Luke verse 1 verse 38 says, And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to thy word, according to God's word. And then the angel would have departed from her. 
So her response was that of acceptance. So she was willing to accept what the Lord would do and she just wanted clarity. So how will respond matters? It could either mute or limit or it could propel us to do what God has called us to do to accomplish that vision with ease. My second biblical account would be from the Old Testament in the book of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah was a young person and in chapter 1 verses 4 to 8 it says, The Lord said, Jeremiah, I am your creator. And before you were born, I chose you to speak for me to the nations. I replied, I am not a good speaker and I am too young. Don't say that you're young, the Lord answered. If I tell you to go and speak to someone, then go. And when you tell, and when I tell you what to say, don't leave out the word. I promise to be with you and keep you safe, so don't be afraid. So we see that Jeremiah was afraid, but God assured him, don't be afraid that God is with you. God also needed to intervene in the situation and change the way that Jeremiah thought of himself. He thought of himself as being inadequate, inexperienced, young. And sometimes we too have these feelings that we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not experienced enough, we're too old, we're too young, we're too this, that, and the other. But God is telling you, you can do it. I am with you. Have confidence in yourself. So, don't be afraid. God is with us. God is with me. God is with you. And you do not need to speak negatively of yourself. Do not think negatively of yourself. Because remember, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Also, I want to remind you about episode 4. When we spoke of the power of the tongue. And how we can use our tongue as a tool to get us to our destiny. To get us to accomplishing our vision. Accomplishing our goals. So, hit up that bonus episode 4 and declare the words of affirmation over your life. Remember that for your vision to succeed, you need to be wise. And we know what the book of Proverbs tell us about wisdom and seeking wisdom. And guess what? In the end, when Jeremiah had a changed perspective in the way that he viewed himself, he was able to accomplish all that God had for him to do. My third biblical account would be a man named Gideon in the Old Testament. And the account of this story is taken in the book of Judges, chapters 6 to 8. And I want to read directly from the word. Judges chapter 6 verse 12 says, That an angel of the Lord visited Gideon and told him that the Lord is with him, and that he, Gideon, is a mighty man of valor. Or, in today's term, the angel of the Lord would have said that he is a brave soldier, he is a mighty warrior, he is strong. God would have then instructed Gideon and gave him a vision that he would save Israel from the Midianites who were oppressing the Israelites at the point in time. Gideon, like so many of us, honestly, if we think about it, suffered from insecurities. He would have exclaimed and focused on what he lacked, what he didn't have. In Judges chapter 6 verse 15, he said, Please, Lord, how am I to rescue Israel? Behold, my family is the least significant in Manasseh, and I am the youngest or the smallest in my father's house. And what we need to remember is that we're not supposed to look at what we don't have. But look at what we have, or who we have rather. The Lord is in, the Lord is on our side. Yes, we may want to compare ourselves to other people and then count ourselves out of the race, but no. But it may be a case where people are counting you out of the race. But remember that God is with you. So even as David was counted out of the race, he wasn't even considered when the prophet Samuel at the point in time would have come to the house of Jesse to anoint the next future king. He was, they didn't even welcome him home. He was busy on the field working. But guess what? He was still called for and 
and he still got the oil anointed over him. Similarly, when David went to deliver food for his brothers who were in the army and he saw the torment and the distress that his soldiers as well as the king at the point in time had and he was like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that they should be oppressing my people? And he had a holy righteousness that came upon him and he wanted to help. And although his brothers doubted him and said, but you cannot slay Goliath, guess what? He slayed Goliath. So, regardless of how you feel or how insignificant you may be or people may think you are, when God has placed a vision and a purpose for you, believe Him. You can accomplish it. So, please believe. You are listening to this video for a reason. And I just want to encourage you to reach out to God today so that He can direct you and guide, guide you in terms of what His unique vision and purpose for your life. So keep seeking God. My fourth point biblical account would be that of Joseph and I bring up this story in terms of who you share your vision your goals your dreams with because sometimes we share it with the wrong people and it can hinder or delay the coming about of the vision but thank God he is merciful and even in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 we see that even though the vision delays that we must still patiently wait for it because it will come but we still need to be careful what we say and who we say things to all right so in the account of joseph in the old testament he was a young he was one of the younger brothers and he was well loved by his father and as a result his brothers resented him they hated him they were jealous of him and joseph had a dream well had dreams when he was young that he will become a ruler and that he would rule over his family and his people and when he shared it with his family the father did take note of it but his brothers hated him even more because of it and as a result they started to plot his demise they were ready to kill him but in the end they just settled to sell him as a slave remember he came from a wealthy family his father was rich and they sold him as a slave in a foreign land and it went downhill from there but God is good but let me just pause to share these five people that you should not be sharing your goals and dreams with and the first one is negative thinkers number two would be negative talkers because at the end of the day they're going to speak a lot of filth and a lot of negativity and doubt over your goals and vision and you don't want to have the added task of having to uproot those negative words spoken over your life. Two, you need to avoid gossipers. Don't be telling your dreams and goals to gossipers because at the end of the day, the whole world will go know your business before it is ready. And not not making sense. Fourth, don't tell your goals and your visions to dream teas. Why? Because they'd want to take it for themselves as well as they would want to rob you of the motivation, the enthusiasm, the, the zeal to press forward and do what God has called you to do. And it would hinder you accomplishing your goals. And guess what? They're not going to support you and they will not even contribute towards your success or contribute towards you accomplishing your goals. So it don't make sense. Fifthly, this fifth set of people that you should not be telling your dreams and goals and visions to would be stagnant people. And by stagnant people, I mean people that are complacent and they're just comfortable being where they are. They're just in a zone that, hey, let me just get up, let me just go to work, let me just eat, let me just poop and repeat the cycle. They, they have no zeal, no passion to pursue anything. They are just complacent and comfortable where they are. So those are the five people that you should definitely not be sharing your goals with. Back to the story of Joseph. So his brothers sold him to a foreign land. And at that point in time, Joseph would have lacked wisdom in terms of who he should have shared his dreams with. 
He was young, he was naive, he didn't know better. But with the life experiences that he had to endure in that foreign land, bet your bottom dollar, growth and development did happen. And God was faithful to complete what he said that he would do. And guess what? He became prime minister and he was able to help his family who at that point in time would have been going through a famine because for seven years there was good and then for seven years there were bad and there were no crops and a lot of different things and Joseph in his wisdom was able to strategically place himself to become the prime minister and to help and his dream came true where he was able to rule his family and to bring help to his parents, his siblings, as well as his home nation. And guess what? He never hold the wrongdoings that his brothers would have done towards him. So as I said, growth and development happen. So, I hope that today's video was really, really beneficial to you and that you're able to apply these principles of wisdom to your life. Remember that God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So these biblical accounts are given for a reason. Let's use it so that we can be wise and learn from the other's mistakes so that we can make better decisions, so that we can accomplish our goals. So I'm here, Clark, and thanks for joining us for today's episode of rights in your vision so that you can accomplish your goals. Take care.